The early 1990s were a special time for NASCAR as Dale Earnhardt, Alan Kuwicki, and Bill Elliott were the faces of a growing but still homegrown racing series. Over a quarter century later, these days are the central theme of the 2019 Throwback Weekend at the Darlington Raceway. Several drivers and teams will be sporting heritage to the 1990s or both ways in the timeline this Labor Day weekend. Time to get into that throwback spirit with yet another spotter's guide to the 2019 Darlington Throwbacks. Starcom and Landon Castle are bringing a silver bullet to the track in the form of Sterling Marlin's Coors Light Dodge from the early 2000s. The Tennessee Pioneer provided years worth of victories and memories driving the number 40 for Chip Ganassi Racing. In terms of this Chevrolet Camaro, the logos fit rather nice with the original work. It's a year or two ahead of the timeline, but the small team might end up executing it better than let's say the 42 in a few years since they have no strict corporate colors. Many seem to hate this throwback, but Kurt Busch's orange Chevrolet accessory scheme is a great breath of fresh air from my perspective. It's a nod to the original Chevrolet Camaro that hit the roads in 1969, and taking into account the car type resides in the NASCAR Cup Series, it's a great mixing of old school with the new sleek and edgy Z01. Now, it won't be a top tier revision on many fan rankings, but at least they didn't bleach it compared to others. NASCAR's longest tenured car sponsor combination continues to honor its legacy, with Miller Lite once again racing a Rusty Wallace vintage scheme. Mixing with the traditional black and gold is the modern Miller Red and Blue, brewing up a unique design on Bad Brad's Ford Mustang. One thing I admire about the two throwback is that they have a long-term game plan and aren't rushing through time and missing underrated gems like the 2019 edition. There are designs upon designs you can roll out over the next two to three decades, including some Coors Light designs since the Denver Brew is under the company Miller Coors. Continue to supply us with the enrichments, Tom Long, and don't try to leave the sport in 2020. With the heritage of the Childress family name, third-generation star Austin Dillon and American Ethanol will continue the ingrained legacy. Nicknamed Black Gold, Richard Childress sported this design on his Oldsmobile throughout the late 1970s. Taking a look back on this throwback timeline, I can't remember a genuinely awful throwback for the three car. A majority of the praise goes to American Ethanol, as they've altered their traditional green and white branding and company logo to pull off these show stoppers. Not better than the 2017 and 2018 Dale Senior throwbacks, and maybe 2015, but it definitely holds service against the 2019 class fairly well. For the fourth time in five years, the Roush number no. six will throw back to its Hall of Fame wheelman Mark Martin. Veteran Ryan Newman will drive the iconic Valvoline based design that won the Southern 500 26 years ago. While the driver should give the number a boost on the leaderboard, the Oscar Mayer sponsorship butchers the legacy and branding of the winning Ford Thunderbird. The white just doesn't mesh well with the red, orange, and yellow like the AdvoCare colors did, and it doesn't give me nostalgia from that event. I wish Oscar Mayer and Roush would use those colors to its advantage because they can put out a genuine masterpiece instead of a cheap imitation to fit the time frame. So Richard Childress Racing is celebrating its 50th anniversary and the number 8 has a storied legacy in the sport of NASCAR. Daniel Hammer could make a statement racing against the Lady in Black and provide some vibe in an otherwise frustrating campaign. Instead, Caterpillar continues course and decides to throw back to a tractor from the 1920s. Compared to the beautiful 2015 company nod, the colors and patterns just don't stand out and distance itself from the other paint jobs. Now, at least they didn't copy and paste Austin Dillon's design for the third time in four years, so they get bonus points on originality. It will save them from being worst in the show. Chase Elliott continues to honor the family legacy, this time paying homage to Bill's 1981 primary design. This car is the most fitting, considering the Baby Blue scheme raced a year too soon and the KC Elliott throwback was inaccurate because of the Napa Blue replacing the original red. Contrasting from the ghosts of throwbacks past, this car was executed to perfection on the renderings. Everything from the colors, font, and the Napa sponsorship greatly mimics what his dad piloted nearly four decades ago. Definitely the greatest of the three Elliott family throwbacks. With car owner Tony Stewart a few months away from receiving his blue jacket, three of SHR's four Ford Mustangs will throw back to the three-time champion. Eric Almirola honors the traditional Winston Cup title model closely off of Tony Stewart's 2002 primary paint scheme. Next to the other smoke throwbacks, this gives the weakest nostalgia rush of the group. This car would have been much cooler with the traditional 20 font style as well as the Smithfield logo modeled into the Home Depot logo. Among the 10 throwbacks, however, it is on a higher constructed bar than every other model besides 2017. Denny is hoping to deliver his third Southern 500 victory on Sunday with his Toyota Camry sported in the black and orange Western Auto Parts colors. 
This same design was driven by three-time NASCAR champion Darrell Waltrip in 92, where he scored his first and only Southern 500 trophy. As you recall, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Roush raced this design during DW's final NASCAR broadcast, but there are differences between the two designs. FedEx changed the red to orange as this better fits the branding and image for the delivery company. While they missed out on using a neon orange, this iteration was better executed than the original Roush design. I'm hesitant to say it's better than Matt Benedetto's Sonoma throwback, especially since the majority of the fanbase is still tedious about finishing behind Denny Hamlin. You don't have NASCAR without the representation of good old Michael Waltrip, as Pennzoil and Menards will sport this legendary 1990s scheme on Ryan Blaney's Ford Mustang. This mashup represents that time period well, and everything from the coloring to the Pennzoil logo gives it that Midas touch. It's too bad they aren't a sponsor in NASCAR. Erich Keplinger is certainly more static than usual, but this will be nothing compared to the Premium Motorsports 15 sporting the 500 design in a few years. Geico has officially rickrolled throwback weekend as they will revert back to Ty Dillon's 2019 paint scheme that earned him his first two career stage victories. They didn't let us down as they've savored this green and blue look since the Pocono race earlier in June. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's definitely the laziest, but Jermaine Racing deserves some points for its presentation. With Clint Boyer fighting for his playoff life, it's ironic to see the red and black Office Depot colors grace as 14. Tony Stewart greatly struggled in the 2011 regular season, but obviously went on a tear in the postseason to claim his final driver's title on top of his first as a team owner. With Mobile One continuing its partnership and Rush Truck Centers fitting into the void, you get a great masterpiece on the 14. I would say it's the greatest of the three, and it's obviously the most reminiscent to the original Chevrolet Impala that captured ultimate glory. Honestly, I thought the 18 would be that one team to skip throwback weekend and run the bright blue hazel hazelnut spread design. Instead, the Mars Chocolate brand will utilize its Snickers branding and race Bobby Hillen's 1990 primary paint scheme. The end results were fairly satisfying as the one-time victor scored one top five, four top tens, and a 19th place points finish in the number eight Ford Thunderbird. Just like the Ernie Irvin Skittles last season, this car gives off the Sugar Rush vibe of the 1990s in a very creative way. Kyle Busch hasn't won a race since the beginning of June, so he will be hungry to claim another Southern 500 trophy and end the almighty Snickers curse. Martin Truex Jr. and Bass Pro Shops have reeled in a gem from the early 2000s after a fresh throwback design struggled to get off the dock last season on the 78. The number 19 highlights the humble beginnings for MTJ at Chance to Chance Motorsports where he won back-to-back -back championships and became a breakout sensation in the NASCAR garage. Maybe a bit too soon for MTJ to race a throwback to himself, but the history between Driver and Johnny Morris's store provides that opportunity to connect to that time period. This red, black, and yellow design will open the door for more blasts from the past, including the 2007 design where he captured career victory number one. Teresa Earnhardt's gonna get stubborn and file a hefty lawsuit when it happens, isn't she? Sport Clips continues its throwback tradition with a nod to Eric Jones' rookie late model car. Thank goodness that Jones Boy was recently signed to a one-year contract, especially considering the last driver to throw back to himself in the 20 was kicked out. Despite the inaccurate white numbers, this element actually improves the overall look and the visibility of the number 20. Everything from the checkered flag to the red and black looks sporty, and it will look great against the Lord Lady in Black. Just this past January, Glenn Wood, the founder and pioneer of Wood Brothers Racing, passed away at the age of 93. This makes the customary family throwback more sentimental mental with the 21 getting painted black and red as a tribute. This mimics Glenn's 1957 Ford Sunliner convertible, a car that he raced to a 17th place finish in that season Southern 500. We got an early sampling of this car at Michigan earlier this month as Pulmonard raced this sleek wrench outfitted 21. That car looked great on NBCSN for the time it was in the top 5 and the throwback design takes it up even further. The font is fantastic, the black and red blends well and the gold trim adds the standout element. YRB's 2017 design was fantastic, but honestly, this is the best 21 throwback to hit the Darlington pavement. You know it's awkward when Team Penske pulled off a greater RCR 50th anniversary throwback than one of RCR's own vehicles. Joey Logano will adorn the fire suit of rival Kevin Harvick and his Ford Mustang will throw back to the number 29 that claimed the 2007 edition of the Great American Race. Interesting choice, but the livery fits greatly on the 22, and the shell pens oil yellow and red are as bright as ever. 
Not to mention the promotional video built up the hype, especially with Mrs. Logano adorning the fire suit in the family. Now we just need Logano to take out Daniel Suarez to continue the circle of life. City boy William Byron doesn't have Exalta for this year's running of the Southern 500, so the Jeff Gordon throwbacks will take a one-year hiatus. In its place is a tribute to the widely popular film Days of Thunder racing the neon yellow and green City Chevrolet paint scheme. This might contrast from popular opinion, but I don't mind breaking off from tradition, even though you have 23 seasons worth of Gordon schemes to replicate. As a Hendrick Automotive sponsored event, this allowed for more open ideas, and the neon yellow and green looks stunning on the 24. Hopefully Willie B doesn't make a fool out of himself on Sunday like he did at Watkins Glen earlier in the month. I'm going to be honest, Go Fast Racing may be a mediocre field filler on the tour, but man do they have some refreshing and inspiring designers in the paint booth. This October, they're running an awesome tribute to Scooby-Doo with a modeling of the green and blue mystery machine. For throwback weekend, meanwhile, the 32 gets down to crunch time with a blue and red design sporting Dale Jarrett's tenure in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. The Corvette Parts logo fits well into the replicated design, and this is honestly greater than both the Bobby Allison and Jeff Burton throwbacks. After three years of the incredibly dull and generic gloves company throwback, Dockslide Logistics has relieved us from the nauseating look. The powder blue design harkens back to Jimmy Means as his number 52 Pontiac adorned the Alka-Seltzer colors from the late 1980s until 1991. Definitely loving the blue look as it relates similar to the Cardinals' alternate uniforms on the road. Much like its baseball counterpart, however, they likely won't win much with that unique coloring. Back in the day, Matt Tiff's father owned a late model car for David Hilliker, and the family would spend countless weekends watching the 21 compete. So as Throwback Weekend is upon us, it's fitting to see Tiff carry the legacy with this unique paint scheme. This car truly pops, especially with the blue background with the neon orange numbers taking center stage. Considering this is David Reagan's final Southern 500, Front Row and Shriners missed out on honoring the Georgia native's brightest NASCAR moments. Seriously, the 2011 Daytona July scheme or the David and Goliath Talladega design would have looked fantastic, and if Shriners really wanted brand identity, they could have utilized the 2007 rookie scheme. Instead, he will race the colors that granted David Pearson the 1969 championship, his third and final honor in the NASCAR Cup Series. Unfortunately, this blue and gold design was portrayed much better by the Roush number 17 back in 2015, and the white hood and red Shriners outline kills this portrayal. Definitely disappointing from the 38 art department, especially after the stellar designs they've raced here in 2019. Rounding out the Tony Stewart trio is Daniel Suarez, whose number 41 Ford Mustang will commemorate the boss man's 2005 Nextel Cup title. Not only did they execute the orange coloring right, but the hot styling really throws back to the Home Depot days. Much like American Ethanol, Haas Automation is willing to sacrifice brand identity to pull off a stunning retro design. The Tony Stewart trilogy will go down as one of the most memorable throwback themes with these three gems revving their engines for the race. Thank goodness the CGR graphic designer didn't pick the Belt South car because the Clover colors would have absolutely botched that design. It probably would have been worse than the DC Solar Davy Allison retro paint job from 2018. Instead, Kyle Larson will lapse to Ricky Craven's green and red number 41 Kodiak rookie car. Clover standard green and black fortune well with the standard white, and it's one of the more underrated big team schemes in the class. Before the announcement, a good majority of NASCAR's faithful likely wouldn't recall the name Ron Boucher. The Massachusetts native was a consistent finisher from 1982 to 1986, netting 19 career top fives and 60 top 10 finishes. Definitely an underrated name lost in the league's 70 year history. Ryan Priest's number 47 Kroger machine, however, gives him recognition by sporting a sleek red and blue design, a paint scheme he graced in the early 1980s. Both drivers were homegrown in the Northeast, racing modifies to build their skill level and performance. Not to mention, the car owner for Bouchard's winning ride happened to be Priest's late grandfather Bob Judkins, which makes this throwback truly sentimental on and off the pavement. Jimmy Johnson's infinitive decline from grace has been coupled with some awful paint schemes over the last three campaigns. Seriously, this is the traditional Jimmy Johnson Foundation scheme racing at Kansas next month. So how is Ally going to screw up the throwback design for the second year in a row? Wait a minute, this paint scheme is actually good? 
You see, this is how you do it right for Throwback Weekend. Going back to the pre-NASCAR days of a seven-time champion when he sported an electric design on the dirts of the Baja 1000. The LI Purple blends in well with the truck from the mid-1990s and the red looks vibrant as well. At least the paint scheme department has stepped up their game massively, unlike the 48 team on the brink of missing the postseason. The 1983 movie Stroker Ace followed Burt Reynolds as a professional NASCAR racer which unfortunately tanked at the box office and earned poor reviews. In fact, the film received five Razzie nominations for Worst Picture, Worst Director, and a few for Bad Acting. Ironically, the Rick Ware Racing 51 will sport the red colored car under the lights and for the most part they did a great job replicating the car on the big screen. Now hopefully their performance isn't as bad as the movie. Going all the way back to 1953, J.J. Yaley's number 52 will honor forgotten early racer Bill Blair. The black and white paint job scored one win, six top fives, eight top ten finishes and placed 15th in the championship standings. Essentially, this is Chris Buescher's throwback from 2018 except with historical value. One of the dullest designs in the 2019 class, but at least it looks the part. What incarnation has this 54 team created? They're going to run a light blue and red throwback to Lenny Pond with the iconic Pepsi colors representing the base paint scheme. Unfortunately, it won't snap away Coca-Cola from existence, but man, this paint scheme is beautiful. Definitely one of the more underrated paint schemes in terms of smaller teams. Spire Motorsports, considering their capitalistic mentality as a race team, will be throwing it back to the anniversary of MRN. The 50-year radio network will feature the iconic blue mixed in with gold to commemorate a historic landmark for the Daytona Beach-operated company. Looks pretty good, despite not throwing back to anything specific on the track. After missing out on the throwback festivities with Lou Marr in 2018, Alex Bowman and Exalta have a showstopper coming up this Sunday. The 88 will adorn the burgundy and gold Folgers colors that raced in 1986, which was a breakout season for the man nicknamed Hollywood, Tim Richmond. Even better, Bowman the Showman is putting forth a great portrayal as the late great racer. Definitely one of my personal favorite throwback paint schemes, especially since I've done some research and looked into the characteristics of this late 80s star. The people's hero, Matt Benedetto is hoping to win this second fight and make it into the 2019 NASCAR playoffs. The stairs will provide an uphill battle, but nothing's impossible when you have the heart of a champion like Matt Burrito. As for the 95, the Levine Toyota will race an IMSA throwback that incorporates the red, orange, and yellow known with the automaker. Eh, probably in the bottom third considering this spectacular wave of designs, but the motorsports junkies will definitely appreciate the uniqueness. Despite only 33 of the 39 stock cars sporting throwbacks, this was one of the greater Darlington classes. It will make the top designs even harder to pinpoint, but fortunately I've given time and thought into this aspiration. Time to unveil the 2019 best and worst in show. In terms of the worst, you earn this accolation by creating a cheap imitation or throwing it back to April. That's why Ryan Newman, Ty Dillon, and David Reagan fit this category. As for the best, I had a few close contenders for the third position. In the end, Alex Bowman's Tim Richmond tribute takes the bronze spot as it is such a beautifully executed throwback by Hendrick Motorsports. Second position goes to Quint Boyer as this looks exactly like that iconic number 14 and I couldn't resist leaving it off this list. As for the number one position, Richard Petty Motorsports finally wins something as the Bubba Wallace Adam Petty throwback takes the number one position. It's one of the most colorful cars, and considering the legacy behind it, it definitely deserves the top spot. Yes, I know I didn't review this car in the actual review. No need to spam the comment section with this occurrence. So anyways, this is NRF signing out, and just remember, life's a beach, and then you drive.